Welcome back to my garage. Last time we melted a plug. We were running too lean at uh, wide open on the PIP2 engine on methanol and nitromethane. Quick recap, I built an engine for my land speed bike. 50cc two stroke, conventional, rotary valve, nothing really weird about it. We have a gas version in the land speed bike sitting in the United States. And now we're playing with the methanol and nitro version. It's an exact copy. Well, the pipe is a little different for this one. It's the new pipe versus the old one on the... It doesn't matter. We ran too lean, melted the plug. So now we're gonna figure out if we can... Uh, if it's main jet restricted or if it's uh, needle restricted. So we're gonna put in... I'm not, I could just remove the main jet. But I think what I want to do is put in just a much larger main jet. Because then I have a range I can work within if... It is main jet restricted, hopefully it is. Well, it doesn't really matter, it's easy enough to fix that needle restriction too. I've got some main jets, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull the current one out and check how big it is, uh, it might be drilled. Otherwise, I have a bunch here I can either use instead or drill out. And as this is an inertia dyno, and this huge hunking piece of wheel is so... My, my roller isn't that big, and the inertia is just 2.17 kilograms per meter squared. This probably doesn't have as much as half that, but it could be close. There's no difference in the power delivered at the roller. The only difference is what the numbers will be, because this, this big wheel will make it read. It'll be super unfair to the engine. We'll get a conservative estimate of the inertia of this wheel, and we'll uh, plug that in into the... Add that up to the existing inertia. Well, you can't just add them up, but uh, with some math trickery, we can get that to be so we can get more accurate readings. Still, all the losses will be there, but at least we have the correct amount of closer to the correct amount of mass being accelerated. I should actually pull this off and do a test and actually measure the inertia. Maybe we'll do that. I think we need to do that, otherwise, people will start screaming in the comments about fake numbers. So there's a uh, 210 in there now. I'll use this uh, needle as a taper gauge. So this was the, in, the one installed. So we'll uh, push that on until it doesn't want to move any longer. And I'll make a mark like that. And then we'll try this one. This is just because I don't know if I drilled these jets out. But this is the same one. So these do say 210 and I don't think I've touched them. So let's try this one, which I know I've drilled out. It says 140, but it's bigger. But it's smaller than 210. I don't think I have any bigger ones than that. Okay, we're gonna, well, maybe this one. 115, I think, but it's not. Okay. So this is the equivalent size. It's probably drilled out to a two millimeter. It's a little bit bigger. This one also has a shorter metering orifice. That'll actually make a huge difference compared to these ones. So maybe I shouldn't use that one. I think I'll use another one with the same length. Okay. These have the same length. So I'll drill this one out to 2.5. Success. See if I can find that again and uh, we'll uh, hold it better. <laughs> so there's our mark and it just goes past. These needles are meant for 2.6 millimeter um, needle jets. And this is supposed to be 2.5 and that seems to be fairly accurate. Where it doesn't want to fit in the, the fatter straight section there. It's 2.6 millimeters. And here is 245. Just like I have to wear all this stuff to protect myself from the hostile environment here in the garage, my good old friend NordVPN 
can protect you from the hostile environment that is the internet. NordVPN is by far the longest time supporter of this weirdo and this channel and I'm super thankful. What NordVPN can do for you is create an encrypted tunnel for your data to travel in so that nobody can spy on you and steal your data and that's super important. And as I've said before, especially now as AI is on the rise and it's so easy to impersonate people and socially engineer stuff to fool you. Super important now to keep people from stealing your data and that's what NordVPN can do for you. There's over 5,000 servers all around the world so not only will you be protected but you'll also be able to gain access to stuff that's not really available where you're at. You can pretend to be from wherever you like. You can also get cheaper plane tickets and stuff because you can pretend to be from a low income country if you want to. And it's super fast, you probably won't notice a difference running NordVPN versus not. So it's just a win-win. Win, win, win. Head to nordvpn.com slash stuffing for a great deal. It's risk-free with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Thank you, NordVPN. So let's pull this off and uh, see if we can get a somewhat accurate inertia measurement of it. I can see my exhaust to port bracket has broken completely off. So we'll have to fix that too before we continue testing. Oh, I forgot to drill the holes. Well, actually, I can just put something here. Yep. That spins nice and freely now. We need a string and a known weight. And we need to measure the distance from where we start to where we stop accurately. And now we need a weight to hang, hang from it. The wheel is out of balance, as you can see. We might want to fix that too, while, whilst we're at it. We don't want to use anything too heavy, because then uh, timing it will be super hard. So let's try this bearing. That's 113 grams. Like that. Let's tie this to the string and uh, let's see how fast it'll drop. We'll measure the length of the string and the uh, height from where it drops to where it ends up and all that. But first, let's just see if this is a good amount of weight. Dropping in three, two, one, dropping. I think that'll give us a fairly good resolution. For this to be super accurate, you need zero resistance, no friction bearings. We don't have that. You gotta be careful keeping it in the middle of the wheel here. But this seems to be working. I've got a little starting point here. Okay, and I'll measure the, the string from here to the bearing. So 1650 millimeters, 1650 millimeters. Oh, you can't see what's going on here. I'm doing stuff. <laughs> 2175 and ready, set, go. Three eighty-one. Okay, I'll just do this a bunch of times, and we'll see. I'll bring you back for the results. We've got the numbers. I did ten drops. Mostly, we're staying around three ninety, ninety-one, ninety-two. There's some three eighty, but I think that's me anticipating the thing hitting the floor and pressing too early. And then the last one, I think that was compensating for for that going on and trying to not hit too early. But we'll just add all of them up and that should average out to a sensible number. 38.85, 38.85. And now I'm gonna cheat and have uh, ChatGPT do the inertia calculation for me. This is not worth anything. Well, I wanna do two stroke stuff today. Don't wanna do formulas. It says uh, an inertia of 0 0.594. 0 0.594. I'm just asking how, if I want to spin that wheel on a roller of 317 millimeters in diameter with a 2.17 kilograms per meter squared inertia, how much inertia do I have to add 
to take the wheel out of the equation. So I'll have to add 0 0.125 kilograms per meter squared to the roller. So that's not a lot, but still makes it more accurate. So that's our inertia number, a more correct inertia number. Still have all the losses from the drivetrain and all that, but uh, that's a better, that's a more correct inertia with this wheel on the dyno. I feel like I need to wash my hands after using ChatGPT for something. It's definitely not, uh, it might be a step in a good direction. I don't know, it doesn't feel right at all. The wheel is back on, the 2.5 millimeter jet is in, and I've gapped a fresh plug to 0.3 millimeters. That's the same as the previous one. So we're gonna install this and then we'll see how it behaves. And it might be we'll have to jet down a little bit to get it to run properly again. But who knows, we'll see. We'll see. I have a sort of slight bit of an infection in my uh, cheek here, I think from a tooth or something. It's annoying because this is like bubbled up. <laughs> and I've taken out two of the clutch springs to make the... It's more than strong enough for the engine. Hopefully that makes it less... Make it less hard on the clutch shaft. Yeah. People have commented that it's uh, sucking in lots of air from my return system here and it definitely does. But it might be that gets pushed out of here and uh, it is not ideal, like this isn't ideal. Now it's good. Now there's almost no color at all on it. Okay, the numbers are in. We uh, we saw 20, 20.03 horsepower peak. So we're past the 20 horsepower line now. The um, added inertia because of the wheel should have added about one horsepower to the reading. So this means we're, we're up one additional horsepower over last time. But last time we ran super lean and melted the plug. And this time the plug I'll bring in closer later on, but uh, now it's it actually looking super safe. But that might change when we get some heat into the engine. Cause uh, I think we need to do two, three back to back runs now to get it heated up. Cause usually the fuel, so fuel demand gets much higher at a certain point in engine heat and we haven't really gotten it hot yet. I want to start to play with timing because uh, as of now it's sitting at normal normal timing numbers. So that's worth looking into. And then compression is also worth looking into. The timing is, is the easiest. Well, it is looking good. And this is wheel horsepower, not engine horsepower. And the losses through the variator system is probably fairly high. Let's try to add five degrees more timing and see what happens. This is last video's melted plug. You can see how the ground electrode has started melting and there's some peppering from uh, aluminum peppering on the ring here. That's from the piston. And this is today's plug. You can see how it's barely burnt a little bit here. So definitely much cooler now with the added fuel. Might be we need to add even more when it heats up, we'll see. But this looks safe for now compared to this. And this is the first one we ran. At 16,000 timing is sitting at 15 degrees. So now we're gonna pull that up to 20 degrees like that. And we'll let it drop to 18 at 17,000.
I think that's looking good actually. Let's uh, have a look at the numbers. Well, would you look at that? We're seeing, it's hard to tell here. I'll, I'll show you the results versus time graphs. It's easier to, to see what's going on. First, look at the EGT. Five degrees more timing, and we dropped from uh, four, 484, and we dropped down to around 450. So 50 degrees. So 35 degrees of EGT drop from the five degree more ignition timing. Uh, what's more interesting though is the numbers because we're now seeing um, we went from 20.03 to between 22 and a half 22 so 22.44 was the last two runs there and 9.89 ish 9.85 newtons of torque and we're just getting started so that was five degrees more of advance the chamber has gotten substantially hotter with five degrees more timing. Excuse the fingernails. There's almost like a blue tint to the plating now. And it's burnt the whole way around. But it's not going down to the threads. And I need to, so here's a fresh one in comparison. Well, you've seen a fresh spark plug before. And you saw the previous reading. Well, it's definitely not looking like this. And you can see how there's the heat has traveled much further down on this plug. I, I gotta do some some proper research on plug reading and what to decipher out of this. It's very different to uh, how you tune on gas where you pull out fuel until it almost melts and then you're at peak power. In, well, in my experience at least, it seems like you just add fuel. Just add fuel <laughs> to get more power. Kind of makes sense with the oxygen and all that. But uh, promising, promising results. The morning after, I'm just gonna wrap things up here and we're gonna end on a high note. Uh, yeah, it's hard to tell about the plug cause uh, most, most resources you find online is people running in four strokes and there's no oil present. And so that contaminates my result versus the, the examples I can find. From what I can see, timing is probably close to good, but maybe a little bit on the ad advanced side now and fueling seems to be on the edge of too too lean we're gonna add more fuel about the timing last video when i uh, i adjusted with a timing light i checked with a timing light i saw it was supposed to fire at 20 degrees and i saw it firing at 23 and then i advanced the baseline or the trigger point from 34 to 37 degrees to compensate Thinking about it, that's actually the wrong way around. So what I did was I brought it from 20 degrees to 20, well, it sat at 23, bro brought it to 26. So when the ignition system says 20 now, it's actually 26, which means when it said 15, that was actually 21. And when I advanced it five degrees more, it's actually sitting at 26 now, 26 degrees before top dead center at peak power. So it's, and that seems to be good, but it's on the edge. I think we wanna play with compression. We wanna add more compression before we start adding more timing than that. Actually, maybe we should put it back, uh, pull it back a little bit, but uh, I think compression is the clue here because we're running normal gas compression, even low for a small engine, like 14.5 to one. I think we can go 18, maybe 20 to one cause because of the methanol, not because of the nitro, but we're still just running 30% by weight nitro. Okay, so let me know what you think about the plug. And uh, I'll see you next time.